Well, g'day, it's Jonathan, Lucas and Toby on the job today. We're down on the banks of our local waterway. We're gonna do a little bit of water bug sampling. Now, Lucas, who knows much more about this than I do, reckons that they have a really important role to play when it comes to testing the quality of our water. But firstly, what is a water bug, Lucas? Um, yeah, so basically when we're talking about water bugs, what we're referring to is aquatic macroinvertebrates. And that basically just means uh, any animals without a backbone that spend all or part of their life cycle in the water and that we right. can actually see with our naked eye. So the ones that I can see on the top of the water here, that's what we're chasing? 100%, yeah, right. that's I them. I feel like I'm going that's fishing, but for bugs, it's, it's different. <laughs> so if I see a bug on the water, they can actually tell us a lot about the water quality, is that yeah, right? Exactly, so we've got lots of different types of macroinvertebrates and all of them have different tolerances um, to pollution or habitat disturbance. Yep. Um, so you have some that are highly sensitive and any change to water quality uh, over time could kill them. Yep. Um, whereas we have some that are super hardy uh, and basically will stand up to any conditions. So if we pick up a really sensitive bug, that, that means we know that the water quality must be pretty good because yep. it's surviving. Exactly, and the beauty about this is compared to when we're taking just normal water quality samples, yep. um, these only indicate to us the conditions at one point in time uh, whereas the water bugs will actually reflect what the conditions are over a greater period. Sounds good, let's get into it. Right, so here we have our water bug kit. I'm just gonna run you through what it actually consists of. Um, so first off, we've just got ourselves a net, pretty self-explanatory. Gonna give that one to Jono. Might take it off your hands if that's all right. I'll get a head start. Sounds good, see if you can find some good water bug habitats for me. Next off, we just have a couple of trays. We can use this to collect, uh, to sort all the sample that we've collected. Um, and then we can use a bunch of these ice cubes just to sort all the different types of water bugs into their respective categories. Um, to actually collect all the water bugs out of the sample tray, we have a range of different utensils, spoons and a pipette, um, just to make picking them up nice and easy. Uh, we also have a magnifying glass here, just to make it a bit easier on your eyes and help with some of those smaller individuals. Uh, and then lastly, we just have our actual water bug flow chart, the taxa flow chart, and we can work our way through this just to identify what they are and then record that information on our data sheet. All right, so we're in our waterway uh, and the boys are gonna try sample as many different habitats as they can. Um, so as you can see, they're gonna start off just by sampling some woody structure if that's available. Um, here, you just wanna really scrape the net right up against the woody structure just to collect all those water bugs. Um, you can also then start to sample some of the aquatic vegetation. Um, again, here you just really want to find the balance between getting close enough so you actually dislodge all those water bugs, uh, but not too close, you're just going to get a net full of sediment. Um, then another technique we can actually use when we're just on the open substrate with a gravel uh, or sediment bottom, um, we just want to use some big long strokes just to create a bit of current um, so we can actually dislodge those water bugs off the substrate and get them into our net. Now much like with fishing, water bug monitoring requires a little bit of technique and Lucas has tipped me off to one that uh, is actually pretty cool. So if you find yourself in an area that's nice and shallow and it's got high flow, and what I mean by that is water is flowing through, you can stick the net down into the ground. Toby, I need a hand here, just like that. And then get your feet and use them just like you're getting pippies at the beach. So jam your feet into the ground or the sediment move around, you can do a bit of a jiggy if you want, and what that is gonna do is stir up all the bugs within the actual sediment, and then wash them down into the net. You ready, Toby? We're on. So I'm about half a foot away, I got nice sturdy shoes on, and I'm just doing a bit of a dance. And that's stirring up uh, rock, sediment, and little bits of dirt that's washing in there. Now let's check what we've got. There you go, there's a few prawns and bugs in there already. Why can we take them up to the table and let uh, Lucas tell us what they mean? All right, so we have our sorting station all set up now and the boys are just coming back from uh, collecting as many water bugs from different habitats as they can. How'd you guys go? I think we got a couple, mate. We got a bag full of Your oh, technique worked. Good. Beautiful. All right, so next step, we're just gonna put this straight into the sorting tray. Um, if you have a bigger sample, you can also set, um, break this just up into batches because we had too much uh, in there, it's just gonna be very hard to identify the water bugs against a dark background. Look at all that, once you put it in the water, they kind of disperse <laughs> out and you can see how much you've got. I know. That technique Lots of worked. Little crustacea. Um, so what we're gonna do from here, um, we're just gonna start sorting all these into categories, um, just using the features we see of all the different water bugs. Uh, what we're aiming to do here is try to get as big a diversity uh, of them as you can. Uh, we don't have to get every one of the same type. So we're just gonna start Picking through these and putting these into the ice cube trays. Are we all doing this? Let's get I into it. I think we need as many people as possible.
You can just go up to the edges and you can sort of corner them uh, against the sides of the tray. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm scooping for prawns in the salt water chasing brim exactly. or something like that. And just remember, if it's a hot day, guys, we want to do this uh, undercover so it doesn't heat up the water too much. Because um, as we know, yeah, it's a bit, bit hard on the bugs. So there's a sheet here, Lucas, and it's got pictures all over it. We look at what we've caught, match it up with the photo on this sheet, and then you record it on the recording sheet, put a little X next to it, and that way we can know what we've caught, um, and we can take that back and, and assess how that waterway is faring. Is that correct? 100%, exactly. We're just going to tally them up, see what the actual diversity is, and then, yep. like you said, that's just going to indicate to us. And do I need to go back and do system. it again, though? Um, not today, we not can today. come back in the future and now we can actually track how water conditions are changing uh, in the waterway. Yeah, cool, um, very good. So yeah, now that we're done with that, we actually just want to get all the bugs back into the water, yep. um, right where we found them as well. Pack in the car and go home. All done. Sounds good. I like water bug monitoring.